Welcome everyone, Brandon Schaefer here. Let's talk about this watercolor sketchbook I did from September to November 2018. And all these sketches are plain air, let's get into it. Okay, here's the first sketch. This is some pomegranates uh, in the evening. Very challenging scene for me, obviously, with all this greenery and trying to do the negative painting uh, rather than painting leaf shapes, as I can see I was doing here, rather than painting the negative shapes uh, that was just really chaotic very challenging for me so in the next sketch i decided to give it a different shot try it again with some different pomegranates and these pomegranates were much more richer in their color so i think that really helped uh this sketch but you can see with the lighter leaves here i still had trouble getting the lighter leaves to look like leaf shapes rather than these darker ones uh, but I did kind of try to group uh, the dark shapes together a bit more um, but still very chaotic very crazy to figure out and this one uh, sycamore tree this is a sycamore tree on the side of a main road here in the evening and uh, one thing I really like about this sketch is the subtle you know, it's more of a temperature change than a value change, and I probably could have gone darker with some of the shadows here overall uh, to really separate it from this light. Uh, you know, a little bit of light here and then light up here, but uh, a lot of this is all just reflected light, which should have been shadow. But you can see I was already getting as dark as I could here, so uh, it's more of working on the temperature here, the light, you know, the warmth versus the, the cool, so... It's one thing I like about that sketch, and I like the variety that I have here. And this is probably one of my favorite sketches I've ever done, ever. Uh, this Canada Goose. Um, just an unbelievable opportunity, and uh, being able to pull this off. These are all from life, like I said, these are all plain air. And this goose was standing on the edge of a pond over here with a bunch of other geese in the pond. And he stood like that for about 20 minutes. And it took me about, I don't know, 16 or 17 minutes to do this. I pencil sketched him. And then the first thing I did was paint him. And then I painted the grass around him. And uh, once I had him down, I knew it was, it was going to be a great sketch. Uh, just the way that it came out, the softness here, the transition there, showing the roundness of the form. I think it, it just really came together and the light on him. I just couldn't ask for a better lighting situation. And I'm glad this goose uh, basically just stood in the entire same spot and just kind of turned his head. Um, so I'm very grateful to this goose and uh, I captured it forever. So pretty happy with that uh, this one's really interesting this one is uh, some persimmons on a persimmon tree they were almost ripe you can see there's a little bit of green here so this is uh, almost ripe persimmons they tasted really great there was a ripe one on the ground that I ate and it was a really amazing uh, I actually filmed this whole sketchbook all the vlog experiences plain air experiences so definitely check out all the vlog series for this sketchbook but uh, this is completely in shadow. And the colors here that you're seeing are very, very close to what was there in nature. When I held it up and compared it, I mean, it's, it's very close. So I'm, I'm very happy with the colors and some of the leaf shapes here. Very fresh and loose. And uh, that's what I was trying to capture. And, and I like the, the really cool greens here in the shadows and uh, some of the warmer greens. You know, this was just... Uh, it magically came together, and I'm happy with the, the red oranges against all this green. It's a very striking uh, image, I think. This one was a failure. This one was the one failure in the sketchbook, or at least the biggest failure. Um, I basically start, I set up to paint this. It's a pine tree in the evening, and I, there was nothing else for me to paint. I could not decide on it. Uh, I was riding my bike around. Couldn't decide on anything, so I just settled on these grouping of trees, and uh, the light was only on this tree for about 10 minutes, and I was only halfway through the painting, and the sun went down, and it was just a mess. Uh, you can see all the colors here started bleeding together. You know, the color is accurate here, 
And that's one thing that I like about it is the color, but as far as subject matter and really telling what it is, I mean, it's obviously just a, a boring group of trees and foliage, but uh, it's a good color study, I guess you could say. This is a nice ivy covered, ivy covered silo, uh, barn silo at UC Davis, the uh, college, UC Davis campus here in Davis, California. And uh, just some nice light on it here. I kind of invented some of this lighting. Um, I've painted it once before in oils from life and it had the same similar lighting on it. So for that day, it was light outside, but uh, there was a tree over here covering light on this silo, but not over here and in the foreground. So I wanted to make sure there was some light on the subject. So I kind of invented this a little bit. And I think it came out pretty well, you know, having some uh, patches of light here. So I'm really happy with the colors and stuff. And I think I got, you know, a good contrast of values here, darks, you know, darks under here and against the lights. and. The blue sky, you know, it, I think it really works, you know, simplified these bu buildings. But uh, I think I captured what I set out to capture that day. And this is a pond that I've go gone to many times. This is actually where the, the goose was way over here on the edge of this pond, that Canada goose that I showed a few pages back. And this is a pond in the evening. Really love how this came out. I love the splatters that I got going on. That was... Uh, something I wanted to start putting back into my work and remembering to splatter some of the pages and really try to keep it fun and keep it loose. I like the warmth I have going on here. Uh, and this, the one thing that really makes this painting for me is this shadow coming across the water, that dark band in the reflections. Uh, that really made the painting for me. So not much more to say about that. Just, uh, it's just a view that I'm gonna remember for a long time. <clears throat> This was a very dramatic sky that I wanted to capture one day, and it's it's usually, uh, I did this back in October, and this was very rare for California where I live. Uh, it hadn't rained, or it had, we hadn't had clouds since March or February of the last year. So having this dramatic sky and this, this purple color, really deep, dark uh, rain and, and you know, storm clouds, it was very unique and, and rare. So I was like, I'm gonna jump out and capture that. Of course, now at the beginning of 2019, it's been raining like crazy all the time. So not very rare, but you know, once it gets to the summer, there's not gonna, we're not gonna see anything like this. And uh, here's some mountains in the distance, which are actually the same color as the sky in the last painting, which I thought was very interesting. And these two were actually on the same exact day and I painted one right after the other. And you can see some clouds here in the sky, uh, some dramatic clouds and stuff. So just capturing that, something very rare for this. I painted many, many sunsets at this location and you never really see clouds here. So uh, glad I captured that. Nice autumn tree here and I kind of invented some of the reds a little bit it was mostly kind of this browny green color. And this was early in the morning. It was very, very bright, as you can see on the ground here, just very bright. And uh, the more I kept looking at this tree, it was just very hard to tell what color it actually was. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I was putting in some of these kind of like reddish colors. You know, it's, it was almost autumn. It was kind of end of October. And uh, I was really itching to paint some autumn colored trees. So I kind of invented a little bit of it, but I was trying to experiment with being more loose with my strokes here. You can see kind of brush strokes that I just left and you know, some softness over here, just having fun, you know, having fun. Another favorite in this sketchbook for me, these palm trees in the evening. I just, I love the light effect here that I have going and uh, you know, the color harmony, these really cold shadowy blues against the warm oranges here. I mean, just really beautiful um, for me anyway, personally. Uh, this is actually in a neighborhood. So I kind of, I omitted a house that was right here. This is in somebody's front yard. And I kind of just made it, you know, there was a lot of bushes and stuff. 
and there's a little house down here and I kind of just left that out and I, th I think it's a lot stronger this way. Um, you know, some of the shapes are a little messy here, you know, some water bleeding and stuff. It started to get very cold. Um, you know, I wasn't used to painting when it was colder, you know, it's getting like 60 degrees and the, the, the paint takes a lot longer to dry than it does in the summer. The summer, it dries like within 10 or 15 seconds or so, or maybe even a minute. And with this, when you put one layer down, it takes like five minutes or three minutes for it to dry. So I was getting very impatient, but uh, you know, it's something I was figuring out. Nice soft edges here, so I'm happy with that one. And we made it our way to the last and final sketch of the painting here. And uh, it's a sunset, which I think is is fitting for the end of the sketchbook. You know, it's the end of end of the day, end of the sketchbook, and uh, this this was a very fast painting, probably one of my quickest watercolors ever. Literally painted it in probably about three to four minutes. The sun was going down, and I literally had no time. And I'm, I'm I, I love how it came out. <clears throat> And this, this uh, sunset was kind of an experiment for me, having the white of the paper be the sun. And, you know, when you observe a sunset, we know that the sun is like a, this orange, yellow-orange color. But when you put that, when you paint in the yellow-orange as the sun, it just, it kills the value. And we know the sun is like the brightest thing. So leaving it white like this, and then having this saturation, the most saturated color, right around the sun, that really shows the warmth and the vibrance of that light. And this is one of my favorite sunsets I've ever painted. And, and having this warmth around here bleed into these hills uh, really shows the kind of the atmosphere, the light of the scene, painting the air. You know, it's something Monet used to talk about. He, he paints the air. And I think that's what he's really talking about here. He's having these atmospheric effects, you know, having this warmth bleed into the atmosphere over these mountains, into these mountains and trees here. So very interesting, but also take note of how gray everything is around it, which really supports and helps bring out the saturation here around the sun. And when you look at a sunset, you can really see this. You can really see how gray the atmosphere becomes so very interesting hope you guys enjoyed this uh little sketchbook tour thank you for watching